the hiring part of the intro to program. Okay, let's talk about files and exceptions. Your next program, by the way, is not up there yet. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what it's going to somewhat be about today, and I will have it up today. I just had a meeting that ran over, and I didn't get a chance to get it up there in time, so I'm going to go with that excuse. Okay. All right, we're going to talk about reading and writing files. Probably one of the most important things you can do in programming because you need to store data. I mean, data is where it's at. I mean, that's how Google makes their money. That's how everybody makes their money is off of data. Okay. So we're going to learn about reading and writing, text input and output, stuff like that. Okay. Text files are very common to use to store information. Everything we do, I mean, like even websites. Websites used to be static, which means they really didn't change. Websites nowadays are all dynamic, which means they always change. When you go to them, it could be based upon your browser. Maybe it's a mobile site compared to a regular <laughs> site, or it could be based upon your location. Does any ever, anyone ever, uh, anyone use Tor in here, Tor browser? One person? Y'all need to use it. Tor is, basically an anonymity tool, okay? It doesn't mean you're breaking the law by using it, but it was actually developed by the Navy Department, if I remember right, does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. you could break the law using it. You could. I mean, that's how you buy drugs. Right, I mean, you could. The tour also has access to the darknet and other stuff like that. But what tour does is it creates a link through multiple nodes to a final location, which a lot of times is not in the United States. I had tour up the other day and I went somewhere for something and it's like, whatever, this file is not allowed on your network. I'm like, I, I didn't realize I was doing it through tour. You know, I was connecting through Italy or something and it's basically, or like you bring up Google, they would ever go on a trip like to Mexico and bring up Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in Spanish. Yeah. It's going upon your location, stuff like that. Well, files, Kind of the same thing. We use files to store cookies. We use files to store data. We use files to do everything nowadays. Okay. They, you know, they talk about something you're using right in Notepad. And actually, the question came up. I think it was Friday or Thursday. Do y'all know the difference between Notepad on Windows and like a document written on a Linux-based system? Y'all realize they're different. Because if you write a text document on a Linux-based system, then open it up with Notepad, it might not appear correctly. And Josh even had the problem Saturday. And the encoding of the document is different. That's why in Notepad, we really get no choice. It's just a text file. But if you open it on Mac or on Linux, you get like 85 different varieties of text documents because all the different encoding. So text documents, you know, we're going to play, mess with just plain old text documents today, but in the real world, they can really vary. Okay. Okay. Opening files. I want everybody to do this. I'm going to, everybody start a Python file. I'm going to call mine, uh, whatever the date is. <coughs> file new. Because you need to be able to, because you will be doing part of this on your side. I'm going to call mine. Desktop, Python, call it 10, 22, 2018, in class. Actually, this would probably be a good in-class exercise. So I know people are following along. All right. So I'm going to just type what they do here, OK? In file equals open. Input dot spell correctly dot text. Can't see it now. Sides. You forgot to add. It would have, it would have handled, handled it for me. Mm. So we really didn't cover much yet, but what does this mean? Well, first of all, we're going to open something, open a file. What's that R mean? Mm. For reading. Okay. Reading and writing, two different things. Can you raise it? Is it possible? There? Okay. It's literally the same thing they have talked about. Okay. All right. So when I try to run this, what do you think is going to happen? You don't have. 
basically it's telling me, hey, you're trying to open this file, no such file or directory. That's probably one of the worst errors that drives me crazy because, you know, the program doesn't know what to do. It crashes, and we're going to learn about exception handling later on. Is this a good thing with getting an error like this? No. No, it's basically like you just ran into a brick wall with your car and you're done. Wouldn't it be better if your car just popped up a little message that says you got a problem, but you could continue to drive? I was driving my uh, Volt way up north of Tulsa about two years ago. My entire display went blank. It, it was just gone, everything. My car still drove fine, but I couldn't interact with it whatsoever. So I pulled off the side of the road and I was able to turn the car off, turn it back on, everything was fine. But not a good thing when stuff like that happens. You know, stuff just crashes. And luckily, I could still drive it, but I couldn't interact with it whatsoever. So let's, okay, so that's the way you open a file. Okay, so we're going to continue on. Actually, you know what? Let's fix that. Let's fix that problem. What did that problem say again? Can't find, can't find file. So how can I fix that, you think? Create an input file. I'm going to create an input file. I'm going to put it in the same directory. I'm going to go new file down here. I'm going to right hand click and say new text file or text document. I'm going to call input.text. I'll put hi in there. That's all I have in mind. Nothing else. I'm going to save that. So now when I run my program, Ta -da! it actually works. Did everybody get those working now? Yes? <coughs> So you have to have it saved in the Python directory, not the directory the program is in? No, it's the same directory. That's what mine's at. So I have mine saved. Oh, haha. Hold on. I thought I put it in the same directory. Cut. Should work in the same directory. Python should go right here. Yeah, it's already there. What the heck? It's there. Yeah, mine's there. So my, yeah, mine's in the right directory. So yours is not in there? Yeah, it's in my Python directory. No, I thought we were talking about it on your desktop. Well, my, my Python directory is on my desktop. Oh, okay. My yeah, because if you look up here, it uses KDOE desktop Python. I did that because while I'm teaching classes, I put everything in the folder. Yeah, it's not on the Windows Python directory. It's in my desktop Python directory. I just don't like a million files on my desktop. Okay, so now when I run this, it does this. So what does what did it do? Anybody? Stored it. It really just opened it up and gave a reference to the file <laughs> into in file. It really didn't open the file and read it. It really just it says, okay, the file is there. And opened it. <clears throat> Sound like I opened the drawer, didn't dig anything out yet. That's all I did. Okay. So far so good? All right, uh, okay. a couple things you need to make in mind when opening a file for reading, the file must exist. Ta da, imagine that, kind of important. It says the file object returned by the open function must be saved as a variable. What that means is we're making a reference to it. The file object was, in our case, in file. All operations for accessing the files are go through the file object. Okay, here we can open a file for writing. Let's try that. So I'm going to go to my code. I'm going to change this to writing, but I'm going to leave it called in input.txt. I'm just too lazy to change it. And it again works fine. But this time I want to do something to it. I'm going to open my file, which has i in it again. And I'm going to save it. I want to see if it'll run. You think it'll run with the file open? Let's find out. Actually, it did. I was surprised. The, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll, it'll basically say a file, a handle to the file is open. In this case, it doesn't. So that didn't work out too well. Okay. But we can read and write R and W. Everybody fine with me? <coughs> Nothing real fancy yet, but you will be doing more with it. Okay. Since the file already exists, it's empty before new date. It is added. That's kind of an important thing. If the file is already there, we're going to overwrite it, okay? File does not exist, an empty file is traded. That so, hurts. I know? That hurts. Yeah. So you might accidentally be overwriting all over your stuff, okay? 
And again, out file is just a handle to the file called, in this example, output.txt. Okay. All right, so when you're done processing a file, be sure to close the file. What happens if we don't close the file? It could be a memory leak. And I tell you, I wrote an accounting piece of accounting software, probably 2001, 2002, and I did not close the files correctly. If you know anything about accounting software, you open like 100 tables at a time. And somewhere, in, I don't remember exactly what the problem was in my code, but I wasn't closing one of the files. And if you looked at Task Manager in Windows, like at the end of the day, you would see like, you know, 200 files open of the same file because it kept opening it, but it never closed it. So, yeah, it wasn't a good thing. It wasn't the best thing I ever wrote. But it was, it was kind of cool. All right, so your program exists without closing the file. Uh, the file that was open for writing some of the output may not be written correctly. Because sometimes the OS writes kind of like in batches or in blocks. So by closing it, you actually write it all to it. Okay. Okay, so here's our example of opening file for input, opening file for output or reading and writing. You can read and write data to it, and then you close it. Okay. Um, you can open, you know, you can use the same name, but it's usually best to keep them separate like they did here. Okay, reading from a file. Now let's, okay, if I want to open a file to read from it, which way should I, should I be using it, the R or the W? Okay. R, so I'm gonna go back to my code. I'm gonna change it. Where's my code, there's my code. I'm gonna change it to read. Now I'm gonna do just what they're saying here. I'm gonna change it here and say line equals in file dot read line. Six. Yeah, six. That's just that's just, how do I get a six? Isn't that better? Okay. So I'm going to run this. And what did it do? Line equals the text. Oh, so does line actually equal something? Let's find out. So I should just be able to type line here and show sure, I did nothing. Is my file blank, real? I don't see if save it. Yeah, I probably didn't save it. But okay. There it goes. Okay. My file does have data in it now. But why? Wait, you ever see what I wrote? See what I did? Let me show you exactly what I did. So my file says hi. And that's it. But when I ran it, so I ran my Python code to open the file for reading. Then I did read line into line. So here when I just type line, I get that. Why did I get that? Because you press enter. Because so I pressed enter. It got high, and then when I press enter, carriage, lit, carriage return <coughs> line feed, that's what slash in is. Okay. Let's try it without that. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and delete the line carriage line. So there's nothing after high. I'm going to save that again. Now I'm going to go run it again. And let's run it one more time. Okay. Now, what did we get in my shell? Did I get mine again? Oops. Now you'll notice it's just high. So it does work. Okay. Everybody with me? That's kind of an important thing that whole carriage return line feed. We're going to be doing a bunch more with that here in a little bit. Okay. Should you close the file before you call it? Yes, again? we should close the file. Actually, you know, I want to look at something. I'm going to run this. Oh, uh, I want to go look and see what task manager shows. Okay, does it show, shows the shells running, but when I close out my shell, oh, it actually shows it's closed. So it does not show that, wait a minute, is that the file? Mm -hmm. Is that the one I'm editing though? Yeah, that's the one I'm editing. But it does not show an open link to the file. Let's see. Oh, we have 85 links to Chrome. Mm. What a surprise. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> okay, we got Python open once. I'm trying to see if there is a process entry for that file. See, a lot of 
softwares like Java, and even Python, they have a garbage, kind of a garbage collection service that basically when they quit running, it just closes everything. Still not the best idea. I really should put uh, in file, file.close. That's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There you go. That's what you should do. And you know, I just got done, uh, William might have read this book. Have you ever heard of something called uh, Agile Programming? William, you ever heard of Agile Programming? Other William? You. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I just read a book. It was re referred to me by an actual software developer. And they were talking about the way you should write code and how to do it correctly so you have no errors and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it worked fine without the close, but I should have the close. Make sense? See the one over there. Uh, William? Or William? <laughs> Somebody was. No, that, that's how it was. Someone playing a. You have a cat? Did you actually bring a cat? Oh, I didn't have anybody else take care of it, so I have to play it. Oh, that was your cat. Can I see the cat? Hey, while you're up. Oh, it's you. I'm actually surprised that it was. I like some of my. I don't know why they I was so freaked out. I was like, I, I've been working on this. Uh, you can, you, he was asleep the entire time here, and then just so I was getting excited. All the so I like, I know. What we do, um, we got a new read on the door. That's it, Chad. Found it. How old is he? Like two days old? Uh, yeah. I, we actually don't really know the exact age. He's probably around four or five months. Okay, it's just working. It's what the problem. We found him abandoned. That's why I'm calling him inside a wall. Oh. Did you say that? It was like a burned down apartment uh, building. Uh, some kids found a bunch of kittens inside the wall. But so I found it inside. Yeah, it's, it's not burning out what you want. Oh, but yeah. well, you were reading. Really I stacked about 20 feet by six feet long of wood this weekend, and I think my cast jumped on it. The whole thing knocked over. <laughs> okay, that's a cute cat. Yeah, we have tons of cats in my house. Okay, so let's go back. Um, the read line method re reads the text starting at the current position and continuing to the end of the file. Actually, you know, that's a good, let's go back to our file one more time. I'm going to actually put in more than one line. Hi there, how are you today? I just did it that way I got more than one line on, more than one word on one line. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. Now I'm gonna run this again. Oh, let me print it out so I can see so I don't keep bringing up the other window. Print line. Print line, that's a special kind of print. Okay. Why did I only get high? Because it only reads one line. Read one line at a time. Okay. <coughs> so how can I fix that? I can put this in here multiple times. So why did I only get today? Because it just reads the last one. Keeps reading. Because I keep reading and I kept overriding what's in line. Line keeps. Okay. So what I could have done was I could have taken this and put this in between each one. Yeah, that's put it right there. It's interesting that it does that because it, it actually goes yeah, to yeah. each line instead of just going to the first line. Like it was, it, it was reads the from the current position. Once you open a file, 
Read line, reads the line, and stops at the next. That's what the slide was saying right okay, there. So each time you do it. Yeah, it says, my thing. go back. It says, the read line method reads the text starting at the current position and continues until the end of the line is encountered. The input marker is then moved to the next line. Okay. So, so you could that. read in one line or two or whatever. You could have multiple in there. Okay. Okay, for example, suppose the input text containing these following two lines. The first line, read line, would return flying, and the second one would return circuits. Okay? Because it stops at the end of the sentence. Right, it gets to the end of the line until the new line character. Okay, it says call and read line again yields an empty string. Actually, let's do that one. Let's go back and read line again. One more time. By the way, this is not the best way to write this. Are these PowerPoints on Canvas yet? Yeah, it's on there. Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's put it in there again. So what's it? What? Why? What's going on? He didn't change it. Did it what? He ran it after he closed. Oh, did I? Mm -hmm. Then I messed up. My bad. I didn't mean to make that error. Sorry, it's hard with these huge fonts to make everything fit on the screen. Oh, darn it, come up. There we go, that's what I want. So let me close it. Okay, now let's try it again. So what's it doing at the end? It's not getting anything. It's not getting any more text because there's no more text in the file, okay? So it says, if the file contains a blank line, the read line returns a string containing only the new line character. Right? Says if you uh, repeatedly read a line or text and process it until the sentinel value is reached, the sentinel value is an empty string which is returned by the read line method after the end of file has been reached. So this right here is the sentinel value what they're talking about. They're going to continue to read until we get to the end. Let's take, I'm going to put that loop in my while line is not equal to nothing, basically. So up here, I'm going to say, we'll do this. While line is not equal to nothing. Print. Now I can get rid of all this. Throw my code a whole bunch. Okay. And I literally just took exactly what they had right there. Wow. Okay. There it goes. It worked perfectly. So, and it did it without erroring. It literally just read it in line by line. And it kept going until it reached the end of the line. That's what not equal to nothing. Or not equal to, you know. Okay. Everybody with me on this? <coughs> Kind of handy to have rather than having the read line so many times. How could I get it rather than printing it every time? Could I print it all at one time? Sure, I can. How come there's so many spaces between? I mean, there's too many. There's there's um, period returns between each of the each of the lines. Oh, because I'm using print. Print actually puts a character return at the end of each one, oh. and each string has a character return. So it the it's string. Too, yeah. I had a character turn and then print this character. We're going to fix that here in a minute. But I'm going to take this out, put it down here. Actually, I can put it here even. So what's it going to do now? What am I going to get now? Just the last, well, didn't get any really, seriously. <laughs> Why didn't I get anything? All right, someone help me. Why did I get nothing? Because it kept going and going. Oh, because it overwrote it on the last one. Right, because it overwrote it because it found the sentinel value. But what if I did this? Can't I do, can I do this one? String concatenation? I don't know. I don't think I can. No. I don't think in Python you can. It's kind of cool. It's actually going to go forever. And what's happening is line kept getting longer, so line was never going to reach this. Mm -hmm. So that's not, a, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to do It's not a good plan. <laughs> So we're going to put this back where it just works a little bit better. All right, and we're going to fix that problem William just mentioned here in just one second.
Okay, so a string that input function, the reline method can only return strings. Okay, if we want to convert to something else, you have to use, you know, float in whatever you want to do. In this case, they're converting to float. So the new line character, the end of the line is ignored when the string is converted to a numeric value, which is kind of handy to have. Now writing, if you want to write text, and you want it to be like in an empty line, you know, with like a, you hit enter, you need a slash n, right? Actually, let's try this one. This one looks kind of interesting. I'm gonna try that bottom one right there. And I'm gonna put it down here. Okay, out file dot write number. Oh, that's the thingy. Number of what? Number of entries. Can't. There we go. What the heck is percent D and all that? Format specifier. Very good. Oh, someone actually remembers. Can't see the rest of my code. Percent. All right. Think it's gonna work? No. What's wrong with it? It's gonna hurt, but it's hard to find anyone else. Doesn't know what counter total is. Doesn't know what counter total is. Okay, there's something else wrong. Does out file even exist? No. No, I didn't even open it up. So let's open it up. Let's fix this stuff. Okay, out file equals open. We'll call it out file.txt. What do I put in here? What do I need here? W. w. Okay, now I got my file. Let's let's just try it. What the heck? It might just work. No, count is not defined, just like someone said. I'm gonna say count equals five. Up cone. Okay, count is equal to five. We're still gonna have an error it's called total. Yep. Darn you. Total. 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 See, I look, it's so low to me to type up here. Okay. Is not callable. What did I do wrong? Um, Are they supposed to be strings? Yeah. Just be decimal integer. Okay, what's wrong? Did I type something wrong? Uh, well, that, we didn't make out files. Is that included? No, that, that can still write. Is it because it's mod an integer or a... No, because that's the that's format the specifier. Oh, oh you're oh, wait a minute. It. Yeah, that, that yeah, goes outside my thing. Oh, wait a minute. You're missing the mod? No. Yeah, yeah I'm really missing the mod right that. there. That's what I'm missing. Okay. Hey. Mm. Well, darn it. Did it do anything? No, no. Yeah. Well, good. Can you go back to the, well, if you have to, you write it to? Oh, I wrote it to a file, so I didn't write it to the screen, so how am I going to find this thing? You have to yeah. open the out file. Okay. Right. So I'm going to open up out file the text, and I got nothing. You need to close it in the scripts. Darn it. You have to save, dude? No, you don't. It'll automatically save. Yeah, if you close um, it, it'll save. Remember how I said two slides ago, if you don't close, it doesn't always write to it. Okay, now let's look and see if it wrote to it this time. Okay. Yes, total entries is five, total is 7.0. It worked. Everybody see what we did there? Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's the percentage sign on, on that? Oh, it's uh, this thing right here, this section. Oh, okay. Yeah. Count, comma. Can I put that on the same line? I'll get and that's the line. inside the inside the parentheses. Yeah, okay. All right, there we go. Thanks. <clears throat> so what it did was it took count and put it in the first block and total and put it in the second block. So it's so count ended up replacing this percent D and total ended up percent. 
replacing the 8.2F. That's why the 8.2 had a uh, decimal places. Okay. Have I got that to work? Awesome. You get bonus points for cat. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a stray cat? Uh, yeah, we found him. Uh, a couple kids in my apartment complex uh, found him in. They found a couple of them in, a, in the wall of an abandoned apartment Ooh. that was like I guess it burned down or something a couple weeks ago. Wow. And we couldn't find his mom, so I, we kept one of them. Yeah, we. Uh, my my son found a cat outside of Chuck E. Cheese. He used to work there. He opened his door to get in. It was a terrible rainstorm. The cat jumped in his car. We had the cat for years until it. Thank you. Thank you. Got beat up. And I probably found one of our past cats. It, uh, it jumped into my mom's car when she was coming home from work. She was about halfway home. It jumped in her lap and almost caused it a crash. Wow. Yeah. You don't have any kids or babies at home, do you? Uh, no. Okay. I just uh, I brought them because yeah. I don't know how the other pets really yeah. react. No, I mean I, I, we have a newborn at home and. Uh, it's not a good idea. Is no cats. Uh, yeah, it's they, not good. Yeah. I'm allergic to cats, but only when they touch me with their claws. So if they touch me, <laughs> then I have five cats at home. So it's good. <laughs> I, was say, I, had I had six, seven. <laughs> My cats can go in and out whenever they want. The problem is they go out and get in fights. And sometimes they'll make it home. It's not good. All right, let's continue on. Okay, so suppose you are given a text file that contains a sequence of floating point values stored one value after another. You need to read the values and write to a new output file aligned in a column and followed by, the, by their total or average value. Whew. Let's figure out how to do this. Actually, let's write those files first of all into our input file. I'm gonna open up my input.txt. This lesson seems like it should be a two class uh, thing. There's yeah, it's a, a little lot. longer. We'll see, maybe we'll have to extend it a little bit. There's a lot to absorb. There is. My plan was to cover all of it pretty quickly. I don't think I'm gonna get at the end. We're only very, very touched it. So it depends on how much we've covered today. So, okay. So I just copied all the data in there. Have I got that? No. It's like right there on the screen, guys. Bigger than on my hand. All right, now I'm going to write my code. Not, not write my code, I'm going to run my code. I just want to see what it does. And there we go. So it's working. So at least we know the reading the text file is working. Okay, so what's the next part? I haven't gone to the next slide yet. We don't know anything else. <clears throat> okay, you need to read the values and write them out to a new output file aligned in a column and followed by, okay. So what would the next thing be that I should do based on that second bullet? What's the name of the file with all the... In, Input.txt. I just call mine input.txt. And then the one with all the numbers in it. Yeah, input.txt. Oh, I just deleted it. Oh, okay, right. right. I just gotcha. deleted the hi, hello there Sorry. or whatever. So I'm going to read it in. So we know this is going to read the first entry. So we need to read the values and then write them out. Okay. So what do I need to do to my code to make this somewhat work? I think I should open the output file. Can you instead of read line? Can you read file? Mm, not yet. We can't. Okay. But can I open a file? Can I open a file for input and a file for output all at the same time? Sure can. So I'm going to go open one for input, one for output. So now we're going to we have two files open at this point. So I'm going to move my close all the way to the bottom. That way I'm closing the two files. Okay. So I just opened them right now. So we're going to read in a line. And what are we going to do to it? How about I'll file that right? <clears throat> I'm going to comment up this other stuff. I don't need this yet. Format, comment, I'll read it. 
But now we also know we could have used the triple ask. Uh, yeah. You commented everything past. Oh, but I left the. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I just commented out the other writing stuff. So I did. Are we done yet? No, but is this closer? Let's find out what it does. Okay. Must take exactly one argument. So it didn't write. So what did I do wrong? Uh, can you write line? I can write line. Very good. So I can write line. So now we're going to read. Okay, that worked. Now I'm going to go over here and see what's in my file. Output file. Oh, look at that. There's in file and there's out file. They're identical. Is that what I wanted? Not quite what I totally want, but it's better. We're making progress. Okay, you need to read the values and write them to a new file. That part's done. You all agree? Same bullet, second line. Aligned in a column, and then followed by their total and average value. So, if I'm thinking a column, so if I was to bring a notepad, Larry, if I so if I had 32.0, no, 52.1, so should I have their total like over here? This would be what 80, 84.1. That like that? I thought it would be it's like 54.1. I thought it would be like all of them. Oh, that would be 84.1, by the way. Nope, still wrong. Yeah. What, 32 and 52 is 84.1? Oh, yeah, but you shit. wrote 58. <laughs> Sorry, I meant 504. I really did. It's still, it's still wrong. Oh, damn it. There you go. Hey. <laughs> testing wrong. Good job. Good job. Y'all passed. Hey, I got the point one right. On this part. So, is that how you think we, we should read this? Then maybe if we put the, the, the average would be 32.0. The average here would be 84.1 divided by two. So we're that, doing I don't like, want to do the math. Pivot tables and Excel. Yeah. Uh, like we don't need to do that. We, we can do the math right here. So does that look something like we want, but we should really put the average there instead of, okay, let, let's pretend that's what they want. Again, I, have, I don't remember what's on the next slide. If you're looking at your cheating. Okay, so we have our first number. Why don't we do something like, Something like this, number, total, so we can actually take that, can't we? So we can actually take that right here. So that'll get us a number in our total, and I'm going to, what do we want? We want line, actually, you know, I'm gonna fix line. I'm gonna call it number, their float, that sound right? Did I do it? No. That should take whatever it read in, convert it to a float, then how can I do total? Come on, someone's gotta help me with this one. Uh, total plus equals. Plus equals number. number. I'm not sure if it wants me to define total up front. We'll find out in a minute. So now right over here, would you do it like, instead of, it would be like float line dot read line? Because if you read the whole line, oh, well, never mind. Yeah, so it's the same, same thing. Does that work? Yeah. I, I still think we might have one small error. Yep, that's what I was hoping didn't happen, but oh well. Did you get a total not defined? Yeah, I, I just defined it up above. Couldn't remember if it automatically defined it. It's weird, like some languages automatically define it for you. All right, so if we did this correctly. My out file should have. Not that. Why mm -hmm. <laughs> not? Well, close. I need to, since I just copied, how about put number? What, what, first of all, what are we outputting anyway? Uh, we'll just call this some value. 
question here. Let's see, remember what I typed. And rather than, I don't want it to be on a new line, I want it to be over a certain tab. amount. How can I do that? And tab character, very nice. Now I bet it's better. Oh, oh much better. Yeah, you can exactly. tell. Yeah. Hey, looking better. Hey. Looking better. That's, that's a little bit too wide, though. See how there's so much space after total? How can I make that less? So maybe get rid of this eight, bring it down to a six. Let's try six. All right, now we need to average, don't we? We want another tab. For here, we probably should do another floating point. Okay. Then we'll put our character turn. Now we're going to put here. All right. Someone's got to help me figure out how to do average. Uh, you can get a count going, starting at zero. Count okay, zero. so we need some sort of count. Count is equal to zero. Okay, we can start plus equal to one, and then average equals total divided by count. Equal total. Oh, here what these two are telling me, they pretty much wrote the whole darn thing for us. What do you think? No. Okay, hold on. No, that'll work. Let's find out. Let's run it. Okay. What am I missing? Is it? I can never remember. Okay, well, let's go look at my output file now. Oh, oh my god, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. But I wanted that first one to be a floating point as well. Did you define the average up above? With yes, I did. Okay. I started off. Uh, actually, I did not define average because I didn't need to because I wasn't adding it to anything. I'm still in well, only if you have a plus. Do you have a plus here, William? Uh, you don't want a plus. You don't want a plus. No, here. I, 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 then you shouldn't have to define it. Well, I, I defined, actually, mine came out looking like that. I mean, sorry. Isn't that well, what we were going for? Yeah, but your average has nothing in it. All right, well, I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> One thing at a time. Oh, okay. So, how would I make that first one be a floating point as well? Because remember, my output looks like that. But I don't want that because then we enter them as floating point. So, how do I make them floating point? Anybody but Tyler, maybe? Oh. <laughs> okay, Tyler, how do I fix it? Did you say how to do it as a floating point? Yeah. Just uh, cast it with a Float. I shouldn't have to cast it. It's already been casted. Oh, um, what do I need to fix in my code? Oh, you need to put uh, dot, uh, uh, um, why don't I just take that, um, right there? Yeah. Will that do it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, because D is decimal integer. <coughs> so if I did, I'm just gonna do six four point two F, that does it now. It's a floating point. Y'all should know this already. So now when I run this, my my file should now be floating point. Yay! Beautiful. Can you go back to your code real quick? Just beautiful. Can you make it a little bigger? This one or the other one? This one bigger. Like, just make it wider? Oh, you mean taller? Like, yeah. well, there's nothing else. It's literally just the close files. Okay, you know, you really don't need this stuff anymore, so I'll take this one out. I don't want it to be too huge because then I can't fix it at the windows. There's my whole code. Out, file, I keep me the out file What now? I keep spelling the out file. Did you do this line up here? Did you do output.txt? 
Yes, no. No. String object not callable. Then you probably are missing this. Missing this stuff here. Oh, yeah, I see. I'm missing. Here now. Am I kind of with me? Yeah, I got a couple people looking at me, maybe. The rest of you, no idea. You're going to submit this today, so make sure you're following along. Uh -huh. Some of you really need help. That would have been helpful information about 20 minutes ago. I kind of that. Oh, okay. So I did say that at the beginning of the class. Because <laughs> you're going to have to do something similar to this for your assignment. Am I kind of with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you do average, is it AVG equals total divided by count? Yeah. With no plus there? Negative no plus. Negative no plus means there's a plus. Okay. Can you use R radio code? I'm going to play with you. He's trying to go shopping at the avenue. Did you get your fix up there, Wayne? No. I something in it though? This is what's oh, that's what, that's, I don't have all the numbers you had. That's yeah. the number you Oh, this is something right there. After the two, put an X. There you go. Yes. Should be an out file. Should be, file. should be in the same directory where you focus. Yay. Does it look like? Oh, what happened? Yeah. You can delete them and it'll recreate them. Is there something above in file? Oh, like opening in file? Now? I think I know it's One more time. Is there something above in file? No. I have it top of my code. No. All right. So we're kind of here. Okay. It went back to zero. Yes. Oh. Now, if you want to know for sure it's working, you can always go out here and delete out file. Now I'm going to throw in some different numbers in input file. I'm going to put in a 6, and I'll put a 99.99. Did anyone waste their money on the Mega Millions yet? Or Mega Billions? Oh, that's interesting. Not yet. <laughs> no, it should create. I won a little bit, but you don't have it. I won four bucks last week. In other words, my wife gambled four and lost it. I didn't, so I technically won. <laughs> See how that works? Oops. All right. See if it worked. I just changed my values up a little bit. Let's see if it actually did anything for me. Fair enough. Worked like a champ. Okay, I think we've done one slide all day. We are making progress. All right, let's move on. Are we ready to move on? Whoops. On it. Ours doesn't look anything like theirs. Good. <laughs> no, all that work. I knew it. Ours is better. We're leaving ours alone. Yeah. We are touching. But 
We're leaving as one. Okay, moving on. Oh, they already have written for it anyway. Well, heck, we could have just used their code. We're moving on. Okay, common errors. When using a string, little the file name with the path information. This is such a big issue. You can't just use backslashes and stuff like that. So if you're in C, homework input that text, you've got to put it in there twice. Okay. Great. Is there someone in this class? No, I was grading a job this morning. Someone had that in there. It's actually called an escape character. It's in there one time, so you need it in there twice. Okay, so if you want to specify a path of a, like where your file is located, if you just put input.txt, it'll look in the current directory. If you want to specify exactly where it's at, you need to specify the path, but you got to put slash. So the single backslash is an escape character. So if you want a backslash, you need to have two of them. Make sense? Okay. When using uh, supplies of following a program, users should not type backslash twice. Okay. okay, now let's talk about split. Okay. R split, L split, plain old split. Um, they're kind of handy. It says, um, as long as you have to learn how to process text with complex components and you learn how to cope with challenges. In their example here, they're going to take Mary. <coughs> Mary has a little lamb and break it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, how am I going to do this? I want to take my code, but I don't want to waste this because this code is too amazing. So I'm just going to comment it out. And I'm going to go to the top. And I'm going to start typing this new code. For line and input file, line equals line dot r split. Okay, is this going to work? What do you think? Anybody? Will that code work? Just a non comment, the code at the top. Will that work? No. No, what's wrong with it? Input file. Input file. What the heck is input file? How do I fix it? Open. Very good. I'm going to call my input.txt and I know I'm missing a thing easy. Okay, so it worked now. I just called my input too. I don't want to override my other files. It's too hard. I'm trying to something. I just have depends on where I end. Oh, we can probably do that one too. I like that. <laughs> hey, that was an awesome code we did there. Okay, I thought it did. I mean, pretty much. All right, there was like three other guys. Put in our input. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to run this. Is it going to work, yes or no? No. Haters. <laughs> hey, I haven't created the darn file yet. So, so I'm going to make a new file here. It's going to be called input2.txt. <coughs> uh, now it's called .txt.txt. <laughs> Fix on that. Mary had a little lamb. Okay. The heck, did it work? Maybe so you think I should print this? Maybe print it out, see what we're getting. Mary had, what the heck happened? Made a list. Uh, done. Build it. <laughs> Ooh, look at that, huh? So it created a list of the elements in the file. So what it split is with it split it. It split it based upon white space. Oh my god. Okay, isn't that amazing? It's truly amazing. So, oh, wow. Okay, and so what it did is it split it. It says there are times when you want to read input by word, by line, by single character, and this is a good part of what you're doing on your summary assignment, by the way. Python provides read, split, and strip. 
for these. So processing text input is required for almost all types of programs that interact with the user. Okay. Just like we learned getting input in Python comes in as what data type? If I get input, what is it in as? It's in a string. We always have to convert it. And if something enters stuff, you always, a, a big issue is spaces. You ever type in something and you know put a space after it? Well, split allows us to remove all that stuff. And we're going to walk through that. Okay. It says Python can treat an input file as though it was as as what the as though it was a container <laughs> of strings, which each line compromises an individual string. So each line can be separate. In this case here, they're going to read each one and print them. We've already done that. Beginning of each generation, the loop variable is assigned the value of a string contains the next line of the code. Okay. Critical difference between a file and a container. Once you read a file, you must close it before you get rid of it. Okay. And it says, what if we have a file with this stuff in it? One word per line. When it reads it in, it gets the carriage return at the end. You saw how ours did that. It had a high with the carriage return at the end. At the end of each, there is a carriage return at the end of each. Well, what if we don't want that? I can use strip. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my input file here. Okay, I'm gonna change this to say, Mary had a little lamb. Okay, or E. I just typed them all separately. I realize it's not capital. All right, now I'm gonna run this. Hey. We have a cat. Someone went to see the Venom movie. I did that last night. Was it good? Yeah, it was actually really good. I was disappointed in the service of the balcony at the Warren. Though. One person worked both theaters, so they were very slow. Okay. So it does work. And I could print them out as we go. I'm going to do that instead. Rather than split it, I'm going to... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do this. There you go. So, wait, would you go back one second? I didn't see what it was. I just took out the split part. Okay. I, I want to see. I want you all to see the difference. Okay. This is the code without the split, without the R split. Now here it is again with the R split. And what's the difference? Okay. So the first one has the characters, but it has the carriage return at the end of each one. The other ones have it in the list. So, okay, that's the one with the R split. It's, getting, it's converting it to an object, basically a list. Okay. Um, what we can do is we can do L split. It says a new version of the string with the white spaces, tab line, and all that's have been removed. Okay. You can also specify how many characters removed. You can remove the stuff from the right hand side of it, same as L strip except the right hand side. Then you can use strip altogether and it removes white space from both sides. This is a problem, but you know, when I used to write code a lot, I would always strip all input. But sometimes it causes an issue. What happens if someone's first name has spaces in it? That could become an issue. Well, if you want something with spaces in it, so stripping it sometimes can become an issue, but for the most part, you're safe. Okay. Have you okay on what strip does? Gets rid of all the junk on the ends. Okay, here's some examples. So James, the string James enter key with R strip removes the enter key. James space enter key, R strip gets rid of it, you end up with just James, removes both. James space slash n. Now here we're just stripping off the slash n. In other words, the character we want to remove this time. So it gave us James with the space, but got rid of the character return. Then we got Mary with the space on both sides. Strip without specifying L or R, and it gets rid of on both sides. And if we do Mary with space on both sides using L strip, we get no space on the left, though there is a space on the right. Okay. All I can tell you is that you always need to sanitize whatever input you get because you don't know what people are going to enter. 
you really don't know stuff. Okay. Reading words. Sometimes you may want to read the individual words from a text file. For example, suppose your output file contains two lines of text. Mary had a little lamb. This place is white snow. And you want them all separately, you can do that as well. And it will make it will basically put it into a list called word list that has been stripped out. Okay. <clears throat> and it will strip it, split it, I'm sorry, split it, not strip it, split it based upon the white space. Again, that could become an issue, especially if you were, you know, maybe needed a space in a word. But in this example, you don't have to. Okay, everyone with me? Mm -hmm. You can also strip certain characters off, just like we were stripping off the new line character. We could strip off punctuation. Um, there was a <coughs> article about six months ago where an old lady was using Google. Whenever she asked her a question, she would put in the actual format of the question with question marks and thanked it at the end. And Google actually wrote back to her and said, you really don't need to thank me. It's my job. But you no know, one ever said an article about me. You guys not watch news at all? I love the weather. I mean, yeah. not news on old ladies and Google. <laughs> <laughs> Quite hot of the important stuff. <laughs> it was just a funny story. Yeah, now I want to thank Google. Yeah. Thank Dan you. On the weekend was none of our concerns. <laughs> All right. I mean, um, we did elect a, no. a person president who was a reality TV star. That was in the news too. Hey, we've elected comedians. We've elected idiots. We've elected actors. Okay. <laughs> I did watch on Netflix. There's a new series called Strong. That was actually really good. <laughs> Watched the entire thing like two days ago. It was, it's kind of like, you know, those weight loss shows like Biggest Loser, but not. It's not about losing weight, but it's about getting strong. It's actually really good. My wife loved it. Show called Strong, S T R O N G. Yeah, it's a really pretty good show. Uh, so, um, but this one here could remove punctuation. And here's their example. Let's look and see what this does. So it takes a file. Is it open for reading or writing? Reading. We're going to go through the file. For each line, we're going to get rid of what? The space on the right side. On the right side. White space on the right side. Then we're going to split it based upon what? On white space. So it's going to return individual words. Okay. And then it's going to make it into a list. Then for each word in the word list, we're going to get rid of all the punctuation and then print it out. Isn't that handy? Okay. Is it going to print it all on one line as a string, or it'd be all separate? Because okay. for that for that list, it's going to print out one word at a time for each word in the list. But as an array, um, no, it should print out. You know, Mary had a okay. lick of lamb. Can you strip phrases? Like you can strip based on multiple characters, like you know dot dash dot. Like in the, the program I wrote, I stripped, uh, I split. I'm sorry based upon uh, two of the things to the left of the number one key. What's that tilde at the top? I did not that. So can you do like get rid of I and the in on the right side? Oh, is stripping that? Yeah, or would it can just take it as you That's a good text. Let's try that. I'm gonna open up my input file. Okay, we're gonna call this is the test, you don't have to do this one. Uh, walking. Okay. I don't know if we can do that. I think, I think there's actually there. a method to remove gerunds in. So if I took this, can I specify ing, not split, I want to strip. No, I want to split. No, strip. Strip, that's right, okay. Okay, can I strip based upon that? The split. You need to split. Yeah, you, oh. you left it. As I'm on the wrong word, wrong file anyway. Yes, yes. I want to strip. Yes. That one? Yeah. Okay. No, didn't do it. You're gonna. Do what if you do? Oh, okay. I bet we could split. Hold on. That that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. So we can use ing, but still, now we ended up with. But then we could strip off the carriage return. That's too much work. But say, like, if you had another word. After that, that had I, N, or G in it, 
would, would it still strip convert, those out too, or would it just strip? Oh, them? it would strip them out. Could yeah. you convert like walking into its own list so that each character mm -hmm. was an element? Actually, it does that anyway. Okay. Then you could get yeah, too much work. So could you do like a for loop and like for I am walking? You could for in it, yes, we could yeah. do in. Hmm. For whatever in walking, and if it does find it, it doesn't it stops doing it, breaks or something. All right. So that's where we're going to stop. We're going to pick up. Don't you ain't don't leave yet. We'll pick up on 36. Okay. I gotta make a note of that because I'm going to make it. You're going to upload. Here's what you're going to upload. I want to see this file running. So you can take this part out if you want. Actually, I'm going to comment this part out. Can we comment that? And then and I'm going to uncomment out the other part that was amazing. Format uncomment region. Oh, and what was in my input file? Darn it, I write out all my numbers. Wait, I didn't, did I? <coughs> no, we created a new one. Oh, no, I messed it up. Uh -oh. I messed mine up. Yeah, you could not convert walking to a point. Yeah, hold on. It was like 32.0. Yeah, 32.0 to people are. Let's see, just slap them around. 7.5, 80. Oh, that's, that's why. I have two different input files. Uh, you one's input and one's input. Yeah, it was input input two. No, so you ran, we ran this thing. I have one in my documents and one in my file. Okay, what I would like to see is the output file that, that it created. I want to see that. So just take a screenshot, submit a screenshot only of like this. It's going to have your code, put that on top of it. So I know you did it. Sorry, what did you, what did you, I was oh, I just commented out that stuff we were just working on. Right. I brought this back. And then what did you have to change in that code to get it to go back to? Nothing. I just, no. I, I just, I, oh, I overwrote this file with walking. Oh, okay. So I just put numbers back in it. Mm -hmm. So get this code, that, just get your screenshot of this section right here. So I can see the code in your stuff and upload a screenshot only. I'm going to put it up there right now. 